Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another client success interview. Today, we have Jay in the building, and he is someone who I think is incredibly smart because he brought a whole new system to my eyes with his funnel, Facebook ads, and it's been really, really cool to see his business implement Facebook ads, become profitable immediately, and then just see success right away. But with that being said, Jay, welcome to the call. I know you and I got connected through a mutual friend, Katie, which is pretty cool. You're out in Houston. So why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do, and we'll go from there. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks for the intro. It was good. So my name is Jay. I go by Jay, but my name is actually Joao. I am a self-proclaimed dating coach. Kind of like to put that out there just to say that I didn't go to college for any of this stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm from Brazil. Spent most of my life between here and there. The pandemic hit and that's kind of when I started taking my, call it expertise, onto the internet. It kind of just blew up from there. So I've just been kind of riding that wave and just figuring out ways to kind of monetize social media because if that's something that you want to do, you don't want to do that while you're focusing on a job. So if you can make social media your job, even fucking better. Right? I love it, man. I love it. I definitely have a lot of questions for you. I think you have a really interesting background. So Brazil and the United States, do you have dual citizenship? When did you move to the US? What did that look like? Dude, it's crazy back and forth. So I do have dual citizenship, triple actually. I don't tell people this, but I was actually born in Bolivia. I don't even know the story very well, but yeah. it, it happened to be in Bolivia when I was born. So I do have a Bolivian passport as well. Wow. My mom is American German. My dad's Brazilian. Like I moved here to the US when I was two years old, moved back when I was four. And then every two to three years, just been circling back US, Brazil, US, Brazil, and ultimately ended up here in Houston when I was 19 years old. And I was like, all right, I need to settle down. I need to find my place. And my mom's family was from here. So I was like, you know what? Yeah, Houston, let's rock with it. I love it. And so do you speak Portuguese too? Portuguese too. Yeah. I just did a trip down to Colombia and I'm on Duolingo now. I'm like, I need to get my Spanish up. It's too fun. Dude, I I saw that. That, Man, I got to go. Yeah, it was a good time, man. But so 19 years old, settled down in Houston. Houston. So I'm assuming that you've been there for a couple years. Where did you get your experience? I know you said you didn't go to college. Where did this come from? Were you on YouTube? Did you go through a tough breakup? Like, was there like a personal transformation there? Like, how did you do it? Dude, to be honest with you, like a lot of people like to overcomplicate things. You're like, oh, like this guy is like the source of knowledge for all of these things. And you'll see this yourself with business and everything. And it really all boils down to common sense be the thing. I just think that life threw me in certain relationships. Ever since I was little, my parents' relationship was very rocky. So I had to like grow up observing that really life just throws you into certain situations that if you have common sense you will get smacked in the face with it but you'll learn you'll be like um okay so yeah. this is kind of what I got to do. So it's kind of like a trial and error kind of thing. Essentially, if to answer your question, where did I get all this knowledge from? I don't know if I cuss. I've already cussed before, but I fucking up a lot. Yeah. Basically, getting slapped in the face over and over again. And it's like, eventually, if you have common sense, if you have that kind of hunger to know a little bit more, you learn. You learn certain things. And then I will say a lot of what I learned too was from working with people because I used to work with people for free because I was like, I'm not going to charge you for mm-hmm. dating advice. And eventually you start to see other people's perspectives and you kind like, huh, that's interesting. And you kind of recall things that happened to your life and you just give genuine advice that would you would do. And eventually it's almost like 80, 90% of people's problems are just very simple things that could be solved if you've been through it before. Obviously each case is different, but the bulk of it is just having a simple structure in place. Because I feel like in the dating scene, it's mostly psychology, mostly mm-hmm. emotion management, things like that. And when you're able to look in a situation, give them a logical answer, it's so obvious from the outside, but when you're in it, you need someone to tell you because you're just so emotionally clouded and you can't think straight and your judgment's off. It's crazy. Exactly. It's insane, man. It's crazy. And I've had people in my life that have been like that for me. And I don't know what the hell is like these love chemicals in your brain are, but they will take away anybody's judgment. There's no smart person who hasn't fallen for that. Yeah. hundred percent. I've definitely been victim to that a few times in my life to the point to where I look back and think, God, what the hell was I thinking? No, it's crazy. <laughs> like even for my, so my ex didn't really like that. I did this whole dating coaching thing. Yeah. Our relationship was, I mean, she's an amazing girl, love her to death till this day, but we were just completely different people. Yeah. And just to show you how much like love messes with you that I had been working towards this for years. And I gave up so much of my life for this. Like we broke up and I was like, I want to get back together. And she was like, no, not as long as you have the social media stuff. I was literally about to just be like, yeah, I'll just delete my social media and my entire yeah. career right here in front of you. And now I think back, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Do girls ever think that you're pulling any of your own dating stuff on them? You're having a conversation like, I saw you make a video on this. Yeah. So so that's actually a big part of just having to deal with it is either I get like texts from my ex being like, I can't believe you said this, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Or just texts from like women or just people being like, damn, like, I know the little psychology hack. That's like there's funny. this one little thing that I always say in my like DM conversation, my funnels, a really clever little funny way to ask for people's age to kind of like, if you want to sell them 
something. And I used this on this girl that I was talking to. And then I, I was showing her my funnel. And she was like, you used this on her That's first so date. funny. Wait, what's the secret? How do you ask? So it's not really anything crazy. It's just like, so I have an automated funnel. You have to know people's age to know what kind of package serves them better. To make it seem very organic, I just asked them, hey, by the way, like, where are you from? And it's all automated, right? Hey, where are you from? And, and then you go like, oh, by the way, how old are you? And then you put in parentheses, like, I know it's rude to ask a lady her age. Ha ha ha. And it's all the bot. But yeah. what it does is it gives that organic feel to the bot. And this girl that we started talking to, I said that the first time we talked. That's, it, yeah, it's funny. That's good, man. Let's talk about the business, man. So yeah. you gain these skills through School of Hard Knocks. How did you come up with the business? What was it like getting the business started? I know you said you took some clients on for free. And yeah. I know just from us working together, you said that you don't like doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. It sounds like you probably had some experience there. So take us through the journey to what led you to what your business looks like today. Yeah, of course, man. So I was just making content for fun and just sharing things that happened to me. I eventually started, like people just started telling me like, you know, you should go into like coaching and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure a lot, of, like a lot of your things help. And I would love to just actually sit down and have a conversation with you. So that's kind of what I did. I started, you know, people started reaching out. I'm like, yeah, let's like, you know, have a call. And at the time I didn't really know. So I would just give these random people my personal phone number and just like do these free calls. And then eventually I was like, I was working at Home Depot at the time. I was making like 90 bucks a day working the entire day. I was like, if I can charge 50 bucks a call and do two calls a day, that's it. I don't have to work at Home yeah. Depot. But that's what I started doing the one-on-ones. And really that is what kind of built up my perspective on other relationships. Eventually that started translating into, okay, how can I make this better? You know, because $50 a call, it's not bad, but at the same time, it burns you out a little bit. So I just started seeking some coaching and more coaching, eventually landed with Jason Capital's anti-selling system. And that really helped me, but it was very good towards like high ticket. And I started to grow very, very tired of doing one-on-ones for two reasons. Number one, I couldn't really scale it. Like for example, fitness coaches can scale their business because it's basic fitness knowledge that you can kind of just do like a Zoom call with a bunch of people and everything. And certain things are very specific, but for the most part, anybody that understands about fitness can help a lot of people. For me, it's like, since I'm the face of the brand, people want to talk to me directly. I can't like open up a business and be like, oh yeah, I have all these coaches here. You're going to talk to them. People are like, no, I want to talk to you. So that became unscalable. And eventually it just kind of burns you out to listen to a lot of people's problems. And I'm like, Ugh, I'm becoming like this therapist basically. So I essentially remodeled Jason Capital's business and I started doing lower ticket and just kind of found a bottleneck with that. I was like, hmm, I'm not getting the engagement that I want. So how else can I do this? So I texted my friend Katie and I was like, hey, Katie, so this is what's going on. Do you know anybody who can help me with ads? And she's like, yeah, my friend Zach, my friend Zach can help you. And which was when she put us in that group chat. And essentially what I did is I, I had like this entire course that I was selling at the time with. So I was selling calls plus a course. So I grabbed the course and I just split it into a lot of different pieces and I just stacked them together in a way that it made sense. And essentially with your help, I started just learning how to run ads and how to really put that all together in a way that would match and would be fair, like a fair price. You also don't want to like charge people's eyes out. Right. Hmm. And that's just kind of what I started doing. And that essentially just threw gasoline into the fire that I already had. Obviously it was a, a lot of like adjusting and stuff like that, trying to make it as profitable as possible. But right now, you know, we're seeing two to three X returns like on ads, ROAS. We're just keeping that steady pace. And that's currently what I'm doing right now. Uh, no, it's fantastic. And I remember having this conversation with you. I was like, in the very beginning, I'm like, look, I know ads. I can definitely help you. I can't promise that this is going to work because I've never worked with a funnel like this. And literally within the first day, you're you're profitable and you're literally just printing cash just by clicking a button literally. and launching an ad, which is pretty incredible. So what, what did that feel like to know like that you're taking this risk? Because I'm sure you've taken many risks before, but like this is a brand new risk for you. You're like, okay, I'm going to invest. I'm going to turn this button on and you know, it obviously paid off in a big way, but what was your mindset behind making that decision to get started? I think it was either like really the, the mindset that pushes all of my decisions and all my risks is this. It's like, I have to learn a skill in order to make more money in order to have a better life to do everything. But that skill, I'm going to have to pay for it regardless. I can either pay for it with time. And I actually, we spoke about this the first time we talked. I can either pay for it with time or I can pay for it with money. So it really comes down to which one do you value more? And really that ultimately also comes down to which one do you have more? So back when I really didn't have any money, time was probably the only thing that I had. And then eventually started having a little bit more money. And I was like, I'm not going to waste a year of my life trying to learn this when I can literally pay somebody who already knows all the ins and outs and will not only help me set it up, but will also help me because nothing is as smooth as, oh, I set it up and leave it there. The ups and downs is what gets you. You know, when you taught me how to do ads, I was like, this is easy, you know, like one call in, but it was what came after. It was yep. the ups and downs after that.
that, like the KPI it's, it's and just the managing the yeah. micro adjustments. And that to me is like priceless. It would have taken me easy. I'm telling you right now, just to learn those little micro adjustments would have taken me like a year and a half, two years. So you're going to pay for that knowledge regardless. So it's whichever one you choose to pay with. I love it, man. Yeah. And it definitely paid off for you. So what does your business look like now? I know that you said that you used to do one-on-ones. Now you're just doing course. Are you, you know, you have the ads going, I know you have organic. You know, so what, what is the whole process? Like if someone's thinking about starting a business and they want to kind of see what it looks like on the inside, how would you explain it to them? More so, I guess, how you are branding yourself, how you're generating leads, where you're sending those leads to, how you're fulfilling on the leads, you know, how much is coming from organic versus Facebook, the whole breakdown. So I would say number one, when it comes to branding and a lot of people are like, it really all starts with the content you make. I want to stick to making very informative content. And that's amazing. People watch your content and love it. But like a hundred people watch it. Like nobody's mm. going to build a successful business off of a hundred casual viewers. When you make content that's accessible and of the scope of like more people, a little bit more broad, you will attract more eyeballs. Obviously you might not attract the quality eyeballs that you want, but I would rather have 1% of a hundred thousand than have 30% of a thousand. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I would much rather my math game was so bad that I was like, did I make a mistake? So it really all just comes down to just how you brand yourself and you make content. Obviously you want to make content that is easy for people to digest and will put you out there and will build that like width. But you also want to make some of your content very informational, like have a lot of information and pack a lot of power because now that you have eyeballs on you, you want those eyeballs to see you as somebody who can solve their problem. From that, that's kind of when you, when you decide what you want to sell or what you want to do. And it really all comes down to what do people want from you? You know what I mean? For me, I went to the dating coaching route because that's what people wanted from me. And I was like, okay, well, I, if I can do this, I'm going to try doing it. So I went that route. And to answer your question of how I'm monetizing it. So most of my leads come through my stories. So Instagram stories. So I try to always keep as much engagement as I can on my stories because it's a lot of people that view it. And for some reason, I get so much more engagement on my stories than on an actual post. Like I'll post a CTA and I'll barely get any messages. Like be like, oh, do this, message me this. But when I do it on a story, I think it's because the respond button is so simple and right there. I get way, 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 way more responses through that. And then that just kind of starts an automation sequence. And after that automation sequence, I have at the end of VSL, I send them that VSL, they watch it, they come back, they say I'm in, I'm out. Or if they have any questions, if whatever they do, I have a chat closure that helps them out with that. And then they either buy or they don't buy. And that's for a lower ticket, like under $100. And that's one of the ways I'm monetizing. The other way that I'm monetizing is, again, I grab that course and same price, same everything, but I just split it into a bunch of little pieces and just run ads on like one little ebook. And then from that ebook, they have a little order bump and then they have upsell number one, upsell number two, and then a downsell. And the downsell is basically just two payments of the bigger upsell. And that's it. It is a little bit scary running ads because you do constantly see the money leaving your account mm -hmm. and you can't get super excited about, oh, like, look at all this money because you also have to pay for the ad and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it definitely helps, but it's very, very scary, especially if you don't have a good system in place, because I have like tried to do some experimental things and I've wasted money on ads that I didn't have to. So, yeah. Yeah. I always say before people are ready for ads, they need to have a proven sales process. Yeah, and I think so. that's the one thing that you had coming into this that was really great because mm -hmm. I was like, dude, we can turn this thing on and I can get you leads all day long. But if you don't have a proven sales process, you're literally going to be throwing money down the drain, Definitely. which you obviously had built out. You tested it organically. It had been working. So you literally just turning the Facebook ads on was just gasoline on the fire. But something I really wanted to dive into real quick, because this is something that you probably mastered. You've probably gotten you know good experience. What's your approach with CTAs? How do you get leads to reach out to you? What What is your strategy there? Because primarily for a long time, that's how you were getting business, correct? Yeah, definitely. So, so what, yeah, what's your approach to the stories? What's your strategy for CTAs? What, what's that look like? So again, this is a strategy that I copied off my old coach. What he does is essentially he does what he calls a tide raiser. So he will post usually like an article or maybe like a DM conversation or something that will get people to kind of put their thumb on the story and stop the story to read it. And that like Instagram sees that as, oh, this must be good because a lot of people are stopping. So that already gets you a bunch of exposure. Then what he likes to do after the tide raiser is he likes to do two small little yeses. He wants to get two small yeses. So he'll put like, for example, this is for his stuff. It's like, do you use your phone? Like something easy. And then it puts like, yes, no. And people are like, yeah, because it's so easy to vote, right? Mm -hmm. He'll put like, do you like making money? Like whatever, some easy stuff.
stuff like that. And you're probably like, this is kind of dumb, but it, it, it really works. Just to get those two little yeses and that engagement on the poll. And then on the fourth story, what he does is usually he just posts like, for example, he grabs what he thinks most people want. And is like, if you want X, DM me this. If you want X, I'm putting together a group to do, you know, X, Y, and Z. If you are interested, DM me this, this, whatever, like in a little key phrase. So that's essentially what I do. I post a tide raiser and then I post two stories, try to get a, a good yes, good engagement on the poll. And then I just say, hey, I'm looking for this people that want to. So it changes a lot. It changes a lot. I'm getting a little confused here. You're good. But essentially, it's like it shows you if you are a person who wants this, DM me this. Beautiful. And you're just funneling people to the DMs. All DMs, all yeah. DMs. And then I use automation like for that because otherwise it's too much. I love it. And that's that could be a conversation for a different day. But dude, I'm super stoked on the progress that you've made. We're going to wrap up here really quickly. You know, what's the future look like for you? Where do you want to take this business? And you know, what's next? Glad you asked that because I've had come to some realizations this past week. I think I have a lot of potential to go a lot far further, not only in the sense of just being like just the guy who gives dating advice, the guy who gives tips. And I feel like I could take this a lot farther if I start letting people into my life and start seeing me as a human versus just like a guy who just spits out a couple facts. I've been doing it for about a week now where I essentially I wanted to create this like rebrand for myself and kind of let people in and see me because I've been so guarded. Like people didn't even know my name, didn't even know where I'm from. So I'm letting people in. That's and funny. incredibly enough, I actually started doing less tips, less informative videos, and I've been getting more quality leads. It's not just that guy that... Hey, Hey, it's that guy that gives tips. The meme it's, page. Oh, that's like, that's Joao. And I know, you know, I love him. I trust him. I love his humor. I love the way he talks. I love the way the tips he gives me. I love that he's from Brazil like me, or he has a complicated name like me. And it just really humanizes you. And it takes you from this 1D, just like textbook to like a 3D, like real person. And it gives you all these other attributes that people can grab onto that and really build that trust and that familiarity with. So how, how are you executing that? So essentially what I did before is just I did videos on tips, 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 tips. And then one or two videos that would be just like something, a little something funny to kind of go super viral and create that width that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And then I make more interesting, longer form videos for the people. Now that I have eyeballs, those longer videos will build my credibility. Now what I'm doing is essentially the same thing, but I add in there a lot more of me and like just random little videos so that people care. For example, like on Instagram, I've made a better job of making people care. So whatever I post on there will get a lot of views and it will gain a lot of support on TikTok. If I don't post a video according with my niche, it won't get any engagement. So that's how I've been kind of testing both of them. And the Instagram thing has been working a lot. And now everybody is like starting to know my name. Like when they get recognized on the street, it's not like, oh, you're, they have seen you before. It's not that anymore. It's like, oh my God, you're Joel. You're this person. You. That's great. You know bro. what I mean? So that for me was the biggest thing. And just seeing the comments and videos that I post about if you're building this brand and you start making videos that have nothing to do with your brand that's talking about you, it's scary. It's like you're giving up control. But if you go in the comments and you go into everything, what people are saying, it's like, oh, like I love seeing more of this guy's personality. He's becoming more human to me. I love so, that. You say you've been doing that for a week on Instagram? A week on Instagram. And I've already seen a lot of more engagement, especially on stories, okay. which is like my breadwinner. I'm definitely going to funnel hack you and see what you're up to here. Well, with that being said, brother, I think we're good to wrap this up. I really appreciate you hopping on, sharing your advice. I think this is you know phenomenal stuff. Congrats again to all your success. I guess my last question for you would be one, where people find you online and what advice would you give a beginning, you know, coach who's looking to start a business online? What, what advice would you give them? So where can people find me? I just changed my username. Pretty simple. It's at name dot is dot Joao. That's J O A O. And advice for beginning coaches. There's this really funny video that I saw and it's all about like F around and find out if you are trying to be very conservative and very like, Oh, I'm just going to hello. Like I'm here to share some tips. Like you have have to have the self-awareness that nobody knows who you are. Nobody cares who you are. So they're not going to listen to you. So essentially just go out there and just posting, doing whatever you see, throw stuff at the wall, see what sticks. Because eventually if you do that consistently for six months without caring about views, without caring about engagement, without caring about anything, six months later, you're going to see what worked and what didn't work. Cause you're going to have so much data that you can just pick and choose the things that worked and you just do more of that. And then just keep rinse and repeating that process. And if you do that, for two years consistently, you're going to have a bigger following that you'll know what to do with. I love it, man. Jay, thank you so much. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.